Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Shy Bulls Podcast. On today's episode, I want to talk about Andre Drummond. Are his days numbered as a Chicago Bulls, as a trade deadline approaches? And then I got to talk about the expectations for the Bulls versus the Grizzlies tonight. Y'all already know, y'all got to hit his music first. Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. Shy Boys Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on another episode for me and my co-host, C-Dub. If you like what you're listening to today, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, the question is, are Andre Drummond days number as a Chicago Bull? Man, I'm going to start out by saying this. The last three games, Drummond has been spectacular. That man has been on a tear. And it has been great to see. We've been calling for Billy to do something all season. Minus all that Drummond has put us through. But this is what happened when my guy gets some minutes. It's great when we see him come in in the earlier, the first, you know, the, you know, the, the latter part of the first quarter and him come in and contribute well. And I tell you this, right now he making Billy Donovan look like Boo Boo the Fool. <laughs> if you don't know Boo Boo who Boo Boo the Fool is, go ask one of your old heads. <laughs> For real. But uh, right now the boys, there's some speculation about them potentially pursuing Willie Hernan Gomez. It really does not make sense in my mind. It does not make sense in my mind. The only way at this particular moment that you get rid of drum is if you can literally find something better. This guy will not be better, bro. That's just my opinion. He will not be better. And let's go over Drummond the last three games against the Hornets. 15 points, 11 rebounds in 15 minutes. Against the Trailblazers, 7 points, 5 rebounds in 13 minutes. And then with extended time, 21 points, 15 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 block, 3 steals in 21 minutes. Minutes for Andre Drummond, the big penguin. Shout out to Andre Drummond for holding it down, doing his thing these past few days. And again, making Billy Donovan look like Boo Boo the Fool. Now, I do understand that there was some times during this season my guy got us some foul trouble. But who cares? His size is a necessity. Billy Donovan, he's needed out there in most of these games when these guys, you know, Want to put some size out there. And my guy is athletic enough to be out there. He's big enough to be out there. You know what I'm saying? Against the Portland Trailblazers, these guys had tall guys out there. But they didn't have a body mass to compete with Andre Drummond. With Andre Drummond. And then the Spurs. They tried to put Zach Collins on them. Too little. Yaka Pertle. Too little, bro. You got, bro. He could do the stuff. He he go he he gonna have one of those games coming up soon to where you got a question like, bro, why are you fouling like this so early, bro? But at the end of the day, his rebound and his size is needed, bro. The energy and the pick setting is needed, man. So far, the what I've liked is the combo of him with Dragic or the combo with him in Io in the pick and roll is so nice, bro. So nice, bro, especially when you got two guys who I believe have a good IQ and, you know, one in Ayo Dosumu who is, bro, he's so great at driving to the basket, bro, especially in transition. And then you look at Goran Dragic, somebody who has the veteran experience to know, hey, I could pass out of this, get a better shot, or I can take it to the basket as well. It's going to be a little slower than Ayo, but... Nonetheless, Drogic still has those options. So the way I'm looking at it, if the Bulls move Andre Drummond, it has to be for a package that makes sense. And that's just what it is. It has to be for a package that makes sense. Now, if you're just trying to get rid of him to recoup some picks, okay, cool, fine. But I'm not 
one of those guys that's going to go for go that's going to be uh 100% behind that because all picks don't pan out. Shit, the damn pick that we picked last season, I mean during, during the last draft, barely get ticked. We get excited when he play 4 minutes in a game. Come on, y'all. So the picks at this particular moment shouldn't matter. You th- these guys said they want to do some winning, so go ahead and win. And I don't be- I don't believe getting rid of Andre Drummond at this particular moment will best suit the Bulls unless they get something solid back. What could that be? I don't know because it's a lot of speculation out there about who the Bulls are interested in, who the Bulls may go after. But at the end of the day, if nothing gets done, we could speculate all day. But if nothing gets done, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So now I want to jump into the latter part of the, of the episode and talk about the Memphis Grizzlies. The Chicago Bulls are traveling to Memphis. 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 I don't know how y'all say it in Memphis, but we're going to say Memphis. Shout out Memphis. And then, uh, but hey, the expectation for my Chicago Bulls is continue to play this brand of basketball. Have a balanced attack. Move the ball. Continue to play with pace. Keep the young guys involved and playing through Vooch. They have no Steven Adams out there. This should be a game to where Nikola Vucevic eats. Yes, they got Jaron Jackson Jr. Yes, I like him. But Vooch still, still, still should be able to do his thing in that post. He still should be able to have a nice game down low in that post. And the importance of bringing and keeping the young guys involved is because look at Ayo Dosumu in transition the last two games, bro. In transition, he's aggressive. He's shooting the ball. He's Bro, his defense has been a great cog for the Chicago Bulls for these last few weeks. And he loves going against these, these guards and making it hard for him. You know what I'm saying? Just went against Damian Lillard. You know, Damian Lillard did drop a nice amount of points, but when it mattered, he was able to slow guys down. Against the Spurs, he was wreaking havoc. Against the Hornets, he he rocked a baby with LaMelo, and that's just what it really was. So Ayodo Sumo, his defense has been on fire these last few weeks, especially these last few games, especially when he goes up against young, you know, uh, smaller guards. But he ain't going up against a smaller guard. He going up against Job Morant, a guy. That uh is a superstar, bro. And Ayo Dosumu, if you want to have a great performance, you got to perform against the you. If if you want to make a name for yourself, you got to perform against these great point guards, which he has done, you know, against some of them throughout the league so far. You know what I mean? So just continue to do that. And then another thing, if you keeping these guys involved, bro, the the you keeping the young guys involved, you have more of a balanced attack. Zach had 20, Drummond had 21, uh, Vooch had 20. Uh, DeMar had 19, things like that. Spread it out. Keep everybody involved. The only way in the book, and I got to admit, the Bulls have been moving the ball a lot better, and Billy Donovan and the players have realized that, hey, in the fourth quarter, we need to move this ball, and that has been good. And shout out to Zach Levine for initiating some offense to where things have been looking pretty damn good with him initiating the offense. You know what I mean? So it's been more more so in his hands, more so than in DeMar DeRosa, and, that, and, and it has been more effective. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to DeMar. The last game against the Spurs, he picked his spots, and he shot the ball within the floor of the offense. It, was, it was, wasn't a lot of iso ball in that, and that was good. They, they seem like they're starting to phase out of that, but we'll see once. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a buyer yet, but I'm hopeful. We'll see. And then – but as we continue on, the Grizz, they talk a lot of crap, bro. They talk a lot of shit. But the boys have to lock in because these guys are going to come out desperate. They're going to come out ready to play because these guys are losers in their last seven of eight. They lost seven games of their last eight games that they played. And then in the last game against the uh, the Raptors, they were supposed to have a game, but they let it slip through their hands. And that's, and that's crazy because at the end of the day, bro, you can't talk all that crap and then go and lose eight games. You know, so the expect these guys to come out and play to not to prevent themselves from losing that eighth game. They're going to come out here fired. They're going to have the fans rocking. They might be up in here dancing, doing spin around layups like they did last year. But the Chicago Bulls got to expect the fire to happen. What the Bulls need to do is keep their composure for that first quarter, because the first quarter they're going to come out juiced up. 
And then in the second quarter, once things start to calm down, the Bulls should be able to take over from there. But you still got to come out with energy, maintain that energy, and then overcome. And that's what it really is when it comes down to the Chicago Bulls going for their fourth game in a row to try to push themselves out of their uh, ninth seed. So continue to do what y'all doing. Y'all been playing some good basketball. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to have a bad loss and hear that y'all having another damn meeting because the meeting don't mean nothing to us. We don't care. We want to see results. That's it. That's all. You know what I'm saying? So that's it for me today, y'all. If y'all like what y'all heard today, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you want to send us a text message or a voicemail to be a part of our mailbag episodes, hit us up on that number, 773-242-9219. This is another episode of Shy Bull Podcast with Bobby. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Cognac. Cognac. Gang. Gang.